Good evening, fellow Toastmasters. Thank you for joining us to our 246th meeting of our Hong Kong MBA Toastmaster Club. My name is Steve, and I am the president of this club. Now, despite having MBA in our name, you don't actually need to have an MBA in order to join our club. Rest assured. And actually, a lot of us here do not have an MBA. We have people that ha that are. Of the, uh, from all walks of life, we have teachers, we have solicitors, we have salespeople, and we have even volunteers, etc., etc., etc. And as you can see, we also have people from across the world, <laughs> mostly in the United States, in Florida, as well as in Hong Kong as well too. Sometimes we also get mainland guests and perhaps our Malaysians as well too. So yeah, it's always full of colors. Meetings could be quite different. From one to the next, and our club is very special because we are one of the few clubs in Hong Kong that actually uh, serve wine in a meeting. Unfortunately, right now we are not in a physical one, so we don't have the pleasure to serve you wine. <laughs> But when we do have uh, everything back in a physical setting, then yes, you can uh, come and enjoy a meeting with fine wine. Now the meeting wouldn't be complete with our facilitators and everyone that works behind the scene. So, uh, without further ado, I'm going to pass the stage to our Toastmaster of the evening, Patty Adams, who is going to lead us to a journey uh, down. Well, yeah, I'll, I'll let her do the explanation. Welcome, Patty. Thank you so much, President Steve. Really happy to be here. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening, wherever you are. As they said, we're here in Florida, so it is 6:40 a.m. in the morning. But guess what? We are so happy to be here. Our theme for today is "It's Never Too Late." Kumbushuda. Whatever could we be talking about? What is it never too late to do? Well, I'm going to share with you a little bit of a journey of what I think about when I think about it never being too late. First off, it's never too late to get a head start on your destiny. I love that theme, by the way, Steve. Really grabbed me in a big way. It's never too late to learn a new language. You all may laugh at me, but I'm going to give this an attempt. Mon ongok wa sing sang da si. Da ho aha patty. Never too late to graduate. I graduated high school in 1980, but I did not get my bachelor's degree until 2013 and my master's in 2015. Never too late to be a distinguished president of a Toastmasters club or to win a contest within Toastmasters. Don't tell anybody, but I didn't learn how to swim until I was 55 because my family of swimming was throwing you in. And if you arose, guess what? You didn't drown and you learned how to swim. I am terribly afraid of heights, but I got up in a hot air balloon also in my 50s. I was bucked off of a horse at 14, but I got back on the horse at, oh, let's just say 50-ish. I obtained a ham radio extra class license. A lot of you may not know what that is, so feel free to stay a little bit after the meeting and I will explain. But it's really good to help with emergency communications when you have devastations in places like Puerto Rico with Hurricane Maria or right here in Florida with Hurricane Michael. Never too late to start a nonprofit. And guess what else? It's never too late to do. It's never too late to conquer your fears and achieve your dreams. I achieved one of my dreams at public speaking when I spoke with my 2013 graduating class with guests in attendance of 25,000. So our word for today is persevere, which we will hear a little bit more about what persevere is and you will know why this word speaks volume to my life. And I know that Steve will have some amazing questions when it comes to table topic questions that goes directly with our theme. And so at this point, before we get to the table topics portion, I'm going to go ahead and introduce the facilitators of the meeting today, starting with Steve. Steve, will you tell everyone what the timer does? I sure can. As a timer, my role is to take track of the time of each of the speakers, including in the table topics, the prepared speeches as well as the evaluation. So for some of you who will be who may be interested in tackling a table topic question tonight, the timing signals will be uh, at one minute, I will flash the green light 
in my screen or in front of my screen. At a minute and a half, I will flash the amber signal. And at two minutes, I will flash the red signal. And you are supposed to finish off by two and a half minutes. So make sure you wrap up um, 30, within 30 seconds after you see the red signal. And for prepared speeches and evaluation, you can refer to the agenda and the timing signals are going to be there. At the end of this meeting, I will give a detailed report as to how everyone did on the timing. So uh, back to you, uh, Patty. Thank you so much, Steve. I appreciate it. And then we have our Zoom counter. It's Eric. Eric, will you ex please explain your role? Thank you, Patty. Uh, almost in uh, trying to play around with the, the Zoom and forgot my role. Uh, Actually, being the first time at Zoom count that we just added creative role a um, few section ago, uh, 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 a month ago, uh, used to be our counter. So, uh, but now that we are only in a Zoom mode without being physically in the, in the, in the venue. So a lot of um, gesture or, um, of course, including the, I think, including the arms and arms, uh, and a lot of uh, way of we present it in front of the little box camera. We can uh, we can be notified and we can be improved in a way. Uh, one way is you know looking in the camera. I try myself, but uh, uh, but it's a way that we 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 kept kept uh, capture the way that um, how we present it in front of the camera and how we can do better for the next time. Thanks, Patty. Thank you. I appreciate it. And then we have Karen, who is our grammarian this evening. Karen, will you please explain your role? Hi. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my role for tonight is to introduce and encourage the use of a word of the night, persevere, as already introduced by Patty. The meaning of persevere is a persisting in the face of difficulties or setbacks. And it actually reflects the life of Patty, who has just shared with us her long journey to Toastmastering and also her career path. So tonight, please try to use the word persevere or its variation, perseverance to show that you really appreciate this word. Second, my role is to um, uh, watch out for any good use of words or any room for improvement in terms of our language or uh, grammar. So um, at the end of the, of the night, I'll give you a report about our use of language. Back to you, Patty. Thank you so much, Karen. I appreciate it. And before we go further on with our table topics, I do notice that we had another guest that joined us. We will kind of have some official guest introductions about midway, but we just want to be able to say welcome to all of our guests that took our time to join us this evening. In my case, this morning, we will get a chance to talk. And if you feel free, please turn on your video so we can see your beautiful, wonderful, handsome faces. Right now, we will go to a part of the meeting that everyone pretty much enjoys. Look in the chat room. I'm going to go backwards for just a little bit because in the chat, you will see the agenda. So if you're here visiting with us and you kind of want to know what the flow of the meeting is going to be, there is an agenda that's there so that you can follow along. So at this time, I will go ahead and turn the meeting back over to our president, Steve Chang, to handle the topic topics session. You have it, Steve. It's on you. Thank you, Toastmaster Patty. All right, welcome everyone again. It's me. So the table set, the table topic session is the uh, sort of highlight of a Toastmaster meeting where we get to try out to tackle a topic, tackle a problem, or even just try to make a story or create some sort of, um, <laughs> I guess, creative persuasion or along that line based on that just one word, something that is going to be very ad hoc. So it's no preparation. Once you give in uh, a specific line or picture, in the case of tonight, you will have to uh, try to speak out what you find to be relevant or what is the point that you want to try to get across. So to match with tonight's meeting theme, which is it's never too late, um, I have some pictures that I have selected that can sort of prompt you into giving you ideas of how you can craft your two minute speech. So that's not what I want to share. Ah, this is what I want to share. So 
So just to remind you is, um, the table topic is going to last two minutes, and I will be giving the timing signal at the various stages, and making sure that you will finish it before your allotted two and a half minutes maximum. I'm going to select a few uh, members to start off with first, and then I will leave the last few for guests if they really want to, uh, if they want to give it a try as well. And we do encourage you to have a go because it's actually quite fun. So, the theme is never too late, and I have a clock here just to represent time, right? Just like behind Patty's background, you can see a clock behind her face as well too. So on the clock, there are tw uh, 12 hours in a standard clock phase. Technically, there are 24 hours in a, in a day. So along these numbers here, I have placed pictures behind them. So your goal, well, what I'm going to ask you to do is to select a number, and then I shall reveal a picture. And within the picture, I want you to tell me something that relates to it's never too late. You can wrap it up with that sentence at the end of your table topics, or you can just incorporate it in your final message. That's my challenge to you. So I want to select someone. So I'm going to select someone who hasn't talked for a while. Can I please have Sophia? Sophia? Yes, Steve. Hi, hi. Can you Sophia? Um, yes, go on. Can you select a number? I want to select seven. Seven, lucky seven. Yes. So this is your picture. This is your topic. Sophia Ao. Thank you, Toastmasters, Table Topics Masters. So when I see the picture, which is gone by now, but I still remember in my head with a lot of notes. The first word that I think of from this picture is abundance with a lot of cash and money and freedom. You remember what? Since this year, we experienced uncertainty, right? And some people I know, they lose their job, they have salary cut, probably they don't have their job or they don't have anything to do because of the um, economic depressions, dissections, okay? So therefore, I think people want to be abundant this year. And in March, I saw something new. As Patty said, it's never too late to try new things. Therefore, I start a podcast online with the name of Abundance. So when I see the picture, immediately I think of my podcast. So what is my podcast is about? Because in Hong Kong or in other cities, we all experience uncertainty. So it is the time that we help each other and bring out the positive energy among each other. Therefore, I will be interviewing people around Sophia, you're on mute. Unmute yourself. Okay. So, uh, last week I interviewed a CEO of, CEO of uh, AI Investment Technology. So, they have the experience to share with us like what is a successful story and how could they build up 2 million US dollar company in Hong Kong and Singapore. So, I learned a lot from them. So to me, the picture with the money, maybe it is cash. Somehow it could be our knowledge as well. And passing through some successful story and positive energy, I hope we can benefit everyone who is listening to the podcast and we can share the knowledge and abundance to each other. Thank you. Thank you, Sophia. I agree that abundance seems like a important thing to consider because as the situation we have right now, it seems like we have nothing, but we always have something that we feel to be 
uh, lacking of and abundance is sort of like a mindset that we should all really treasure and be positive about. Okay, next person. Come on. Okay, next person, I would like to select. How about we hear from Sean? Sean, are you free to talk now? Okay. Pick a number, Sean. Um, eight. Eight. Okay, I'm going to show you the picture, and you have 10 seconds to look at it. <laughs> It's never too late, Sean Lin. We all know it's pandemic time. So what are you doing in pandemic time? Staying at home or pretending to be staying home but actually going out? Now, I would like to recommend some activities for you during this pandemic that you will find this very engaging, very fulfilling, and you also be training up your perseverance. Now, this is called hiking. Now, raise your hand if you are naturally a big fan of hiking. Raise your hand. Now, you see me, I am not raising my hand because this is not my take. But ever since the pandemic come, there is such activities that you can temporarily take your mask out for a while and breathe the air. That's hiking. That's going to the countryside. Now, so fortunate that my home is quite close to a lot of beautiful scenery. But um, as you know me, I am a, a cool person that uh, hang out in the city for most of the time. So I, I didn't really explore the scenery, the countryside or the mountains around me. But uh, thanks to pandemic, thanks to pandemic, that we can meet our friends. Now, I know that we can meet a big group of friends, but probably one, your, your best friend, your spouse, your boy and girlfriend, and together you take a walk to the hill. Now, this is something that not on my list of daily going to do or activities in the past, but because of the pandemic, I try something new and this is the place where I can take my mask off. And guess what? It really helps. Now, it really helps not in terms of so much about the exercise or the activities, but it really helps to balance the mood. Because once on the countryside, once you get a chance to take off the mask and breathe the air, all of a sudden, I feel that mm, life is not that difficult. Or when there is some hard times, you can always find something to balance, to explore. So. It's never too late to try something new. It's never too late to try something that you have not been doing. So pandemic is here. It's time to get out of your comfort zone, go into the whatever unknown for yourself and try it out. Back to you. Thank you, Sean, for sharing with us a very useful tip <laughs> to combat this situation. Yes, we should get some exercise, start looking into hiking. It's not so bad sometimes to take off our mask once in a while, just like all of us doing now, right? <laughs> okay, let me bring back up the screen once again. This time, may I have a guest to volunteer? Would you like to tackle this table topic session tonight? Does any guest want to try? Come on, don't be shy. Okay, well, I will let you get a taste of our members once again. Does any, any member want to try? I will leave that open to everyone now. Come on, you know it's going to be fun. It's like picture time. Make a story. Volunteer as tribute. <laughs> yes. Yes. All right, Jared. Fresh blood. Uh, new meat. <laughs> <clears throat> OK. 
<clears throat> Pick a number. Okay. Eeny, meeny, miny, moe, catch a tiger by its toe. You are number three. So once again, you will have 10 minutes to absorb this image, and then it will be poof, gone. 10 minutes? I don't mind that. Oh, geez. Oh, 10 seconds, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> It's never too late, Jerry Kirk. Thank you, Table Topics Master Steve. Um, this picture represents to me a fight against bad spirits, uh, bad demons, devils, uh, human enemies, that kind of thing. Uh, it shows to me that you can persevere through a fight as long as you just have people around you that support you rather than having to go through that fight alone. To me, it makes sense that you should have people around you, but you also have to make sure that those people are looking in your best interest, not in their best interest. Uh, hence why I've actually been in close contact with uh, our table, our Toastmaster of the evening and our distinguished Toastmaster that we had last meeting, uh, Bruce Adams and Patty Adams, uh, they have been extremely helpful in my personal fight against my demons, as well as with everything that the world seems to want to throw at me. They show me that per perseverance will allow me the ability to grow and become stronger mentally, physically, and spiritually. <laughs> I find it to be extremely helpful that they are so encouraging that it makes me want to keep trying and it makes me want to try not only for myself, but so that I can make a difference in this world. Thank you, Table Topics Master Steve. Thank you, Jared, for sharing your personal and touching story. I'm sure there will be more touching stories to come <laughs> during your Toastmaster journey here, and we are all here for you during this, uh, your, your learning time as well, too. Next up, I would like to call upon the guests. Is Tim there? Tim, are you available to talk? What about Susan? Susan, are you there? Make sure if you are, turn off your uh, turn on your mic first. Mm, tough group we're doing uh, dealing with tonight. <laughs> Sally, can I call upon you, please? Hello. Oh, that was quick. Yes, yes. So, um, you know, you understand table topics, right? Uh, yeah, just like what everybody just did. <laughs> okay, good. All right. It's hard to see uh, if you are actually in the meeting or not with uh, the camera off, but that's great. So select number. We have already chosen okay. three, seven, and eight. I'll pick the Cinderella 12. Ooh, okay. So you will have 10 seconds to look at this image and then you have to start your table topic. Mm. All right. It's never too late, Sally. Okay, so, um, well, I think in your childhood, probably there are a lot of dreams, for example, learning how to play a violin, um, learning ice skating, or probably, or even doing a cycling, or even just doing some kind of weird sport like surfing. Here I saw a skateboard in the picture. So honestly, uh, I myself don't, actually don't know how to do a skateboard but um something that close to it would be like ice skating um 
And then I recall once when I went on traveling in South Korea. So that was winter back then. Um, I have been learning some kind of skiing before, but haven't been trying another part like the um, skiing, which is called snowboarding. Um, well, because that time I only have half a day. So I thought, oh, probably I should try something new instead of sticking to skiing or skating. That's something I already know. I should be trying something which is new. So I picked snowboarding back then. And it proves that my decision was actually um, a right one because that is a good chance for me to learn how to um, snowboard, which is a very different feeling. So with this skateboarding, it, I think it's a really great call to me that perhaps sometime after this pandemic, I should try, I should pick up a new sport actually, perhaps use my experience in um, snowboarding and to try skateboarding. Perhaps something would apply again, something would be experience that I should apply, but that could be something new for me as well. So I guess it's never too late for me to pick up a new sport as well. Though it might not be my childhood dream, dream but I think it would be a good experience. Thanks. Thank you, Sally, for sharing with us your take on uh, ch chasing your childhood dreams and something that we can also do um, actually despite what our age is. Never really just, you know, uh, give up on what we're capable of. Um, we have a few more guests here. So can I call upon another one of you guests to tackle on one of our table topics for tonight? Basically, it's a ra revolving around the theme of it's never too late. And I'm going to ask you to pick a number from the clock, and there will be a picture hidden beside, uh, behind each hour hand. Does any of you want to give a try? Uh, Anjali or Graf? If you do, make sure you unmute first. Yeah, sure. I'd be happy to do Yes. <laughs> Thank you. So let me show you the clock. Okay. So we have picked 12, 3, 7, and 8. So you're free to pick the other numbers. Four. And can I ask if you if you know what table topics is? No, okay. I don't. So you will have two minutes to speak about um, a topic that will be related to the picture and with the, according the theme to It's Never Too Late. So my challenge to you is to either end your, uh, your speech with a message on it's never too late, or if you just can't do it, then you can uh, freestyle it. <laughs> sure, okay. Okay, and I will be giving you a different timing signal. So if you watch my screen carefully, at one minute, it will be uh, a green signal. At okay. a minute and a half, I will flash the amber. And at two minutes, I will flash the red. Okay. Sure. And you should finish within 30 minutes after the red signal. Okay, Anjali, okay. you pick four. So I will give you, well, you are guest, so I'll give you 15 minutes, uh, 15 seconds to look at the picture. And then you will have to start your table topic. It's never too late, Anjali. Yeah, so um, this picture brings back a vivid memory of uh, something that I saw in my childhood, just lying down in the garden and staring up at the stars and something that I would like to relive again and maybe look at the various, um, uh, various colors in the sky. Um, I've always uh, had the dream to or rather it's my husband's dream that we should go and see the northern lights and I think um, as time is going by we feel and with COVID I don't know whether that's going to happen uh, but the first message that uh, that comes to my mind in terms of the theme in terms of it never being too late is it's never too late to have a dream and uh, it's never too late to uh, try and pursue that dream. So uh, that's the first thing that I would like to say with regards to the 
picture and the topic uh taking it further i think the sky the starry sky holds uh, different meanings for different people for some like me their childhood memories for some uh they are reminiscence of uh of of other memories that they have had or being out in the open or uh, memories of people gone by whom they would like to recollect by looking up into the skies for some it's an astrological meaning in terms of looking for some it's the falling stars uh, which are a significance or which are a, a harbinger of good luck or a harbinger of uh, dreams uh, unfulfilled which could still be fulfilled so um, in hindsight the sky is a wide open space and the fact that we can uh, see it in this perspective uh is is itself uh, a call to the fact that it's never too late because the sky is always open so it's always welcoming to uh, to to encourage you to just go out there and do it it's never too late thank you anjali for your inspiring table topic talk that was pretty good if you didn't know what table topic was before <laughs> so again thank you for giving us a interpretation of that picture of the night sky thank you for your kind words you're welcome hope you enjoy our meeting tonight all right so that will conclude our table topic session i know we are a bit over time but we started a little bit late and i wanted to sort of give more people chances to have a go at table topics I hope you enjoyed that session, and now I'm going to pass back the stage to our Toastmaster of the evening, Patty Adams. Thank you so very much, Steve, and great job. Very creative with your table topics, and so thank you for that. Really kept the energy high within this meeting. Thank you to the guests that have made you shown up. We're very happy that you're here. We'll get a chance to talk to you all a little bit later, and you all can join in with us to let us know how you heard about the meeting, what your thoughts are, and et cetera. There's an agenda in the chat room, so if you want to follow along and kind of know what's coming next, you can put the agenda, you know, on your laptop or wherever so that you can see it. So we're done with our table topic session. We're now going to get to what we call our prepared speaking session. We have two amazing speakers. Our first speaker is going to be Carmen Choi, and she will be introduced by Mona Shi. So Mona, will you please introduce our first speaker of the evening? Thank you, Patty. Hi, good evening, everyone. It's my great pleasure to introduce our very first prepared speech uh, speaker, Carmen. Carmen joined Hong Kong BIA. I remember it's like a one year or something. Uh, right now, I'm very impressed that she has already finished uh, her level one and level two, and she's doing her level three, the first project regarding persuasive speaking. The purpose of this speech is to let other people understand the type of persuasive speeches and deliver a persuas persuasive speech in a club meeting. So I very much look forward to Karen's, Carmen's delivery. So let's, big hands for Carmen. Thank you, Mona. Uh, the topic of uh, my speech today is should students be required to learn a musical instrument in school as you as you may see in the agenda now um one of my colleagues uh, she has a son who is now studying at one of the top secondary schools in hong kong uh, the name of her son is ken and my colleague is very happy that um, her son is now studying at a very good secondary school. But back then, when he was in primary school, he was just an average student. He was not too enthusiastic in studying and he spent a lot of time playing computer games. And uh, luckily, at that time, uh, he had the chance to learn a Chinese musical instrument called Erhu from one of the teachers. 
And for those of you who are not too familiar with the Chinese musical instrument, uh, I've got a picture to uh, show you. Uh, let me share my screen. So uh, this is the uh, uh, traditional Chinese musical instrument called erhu. Uh, it is a two-string Chinese instrument, uh, sometimes uh, known uh, in the Western world called a Chinese violin or a Chinese uh, two-string fiddle. So the child uh, when he started to learn the uh, instrument, he became very interested in this instrument and he spent a lot of time practicing it. He practiced it every day and he uh, played it very well and he started to uh, represent the school to uh, participate in various competitions and he he has won many awards and then he also uh, represented his school to travel to many uh, places uh, to uh, perform uh, this instrument say so he has traveled to uh, australia or taiwan etc and then uh, his overall academic performance has also improved and um, Eventually, uh, his uh, scores uh, qualified him to uh, go to a very good secondary school. And I believe that uh, his uh, experience and process of uh, learning the instrument had really helped him uh, in his academic performance. First, there have been many scientists who have uh, argued that um, learning uh, musical instruments would help uh, a child uh, develop uh, his uh, overall um, uh, learning ability and also uh, uh, the parts of uh, his brain who would help him perform well in uh, various subjects including mathematics and also uh, in other language subjects. And uh, there are also um, many uh, other advantages uh, for a child to learn musical instruments. Um, besides helping the uh, students um, improve in say uh, recognizing his uh, recognizing uh, uh, various uh, patterns uh, in uh, in dealing with uh, various uh, uh, logical uh, matters. Uh, it also helps the student during the whole learning process uh, has to become a uh, very um, patient to uh, persevere in um, uh, practicing because it is uh, not a, a simple process uh, to uh, excel uh, in learning the uh, instrument. And also, uh, studies have also shown that um, music can help uh, reduce stress. If you uh, learn the a more relaxing musical pieces, it will uh, help you have a healthier response to a more stressful uh, situation. And it is also a good way which uh, help a person uh, express himself. However, uh, many schools uh, at present uh, treat um, learning musical instruments as just um, one of uh, many uh, extracurricular activities. And um, there has not been uh, sufficient uh, attention or uh, time uh, allocated uh, for students to uh, learn more about uh, musical instruments. Uh, I uh, strongly believe that uh, 
uh, schools should uh, make learning musical instruments um, uh, mandatory. Um, it does not have to be a piano or a violin, uh, the more common instruments. It can be uh, any type of musical instrument which can uh, help the child um, uh, gain their uh, uh, interest uh, to uh, develop more uh, uh, practice and to uh, uh, broaden their skill. Uh, even uh, just one to two years of learning of uh, instruments can really have an impact on the children. So uh, basically, uh, that's uh, the point which I would like to make. Uh, so back to you, Patty. Thank you. I think you need to unshare your screen, Carmen. Thank you so much for your great speech and introducing to some of us the Erhu. It's an instrument that I had not heard about before. And so I appreciate that because I enjoy learning new things. We will continue on now with our second speaker of the evening. It is Eric Sue, and he will be introduced by Kelly Haynes. Kelly, I give it to you. Uh, and I unmute myself. <laughs> Thank you very much, Patty. <laughs> um, okay, looking forward to this. What's my communication style? Well, what's your communication style? Uh, we're going to find out from Eric because he's doing presentation mastery two, so level two, uh, speech number two, understanding your communication style. And he's going to share a communication style and its impact on professional and personal relationships. Um, and as always, he's going to avoid uh, reporting on the content of the project when he's presenting the project. Over to you, Eric. Thank you, Kelly. Um, hello, good evening, uh, Toastmaster. And uh, my name is Eric Seal, as mentioned. Um, not the seasoned Toastmaster, but almost two years. I just think back uh, what year and a half. It's actually embarrassing that uh, I'm actually falling behind me compared to a, to a, to a common following this path. Um, and I finally learned how to work with the TI to get the actual path going. So uh, uh, I think I'm getting excited and getting on the path for those uh, of you uh, will be joining. Um, so uh, as uh, the title mentioned, what is my communication style? I think most of us have joined Toastmaster to, to learn to how to uh, speak in front of people and uh, in a public way. And one way is to how to deliver a message uh, and go across the, to your other side of the room uh, or your, 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 either your spouse, your boss, or in public way. So uh, one of the important ways is to identify what's your communication style. And with this, I finally uh, realized that there's a very structured way that Toastmaster that can help you to find out. And as always, I did it at the last minute and in a hurry and then uh, last night, but I find out. And uh, communication, I found out it's a two-way process that uh, reaching the mutual understanding. So that really help us to um, be finding a way that to uh, interact with one another. And uh, that when we send intentionally or unintentionally. So um, determining the communication style can really help us to up, uh, improve and share information. So learning effectively to communicate is always the key to help us to accelerate in either personally or in, a, in, profession, in your professional life. And uh, with this project, I did some research. Uh, like I mentioned, I uh, have done it in a little bit uh, hurry and then uh, did online, which is a little bit different than uh, what the Toastmaster structure is. And I will share a little bit uh, on here on the screen. Let me find the share button, which is a little bit more structured way to try to present it. There's a four key communication style that uh, company that we talk about. Uh, in the Toastmaster, there's a, a number one, there's a driver. Those are the guys that uh, just like your boss, they're driving and they demand and then uh, ask for things uh, in, a, in a certain way. And they are number two, they are analytical. 
So like you said, uh, they are more mathematical. They are more in the sound, in the number, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a structural way when they communicate. And expressive, uh, which is uh, initiating in a, in a, in a Toastmaster uh, of uh, structure is uh, expressive communication style. Uh, for those of you who haven't met me, uh, I think you already know that I'm expressive. Uh, it's full of idea, spontaneous idea. Sometimes works. Most of the time, it doesn't work. But uh, anyhow, um, full of ideas and then a spontaneous way. But uh, it, it could be fun in modern in the time, but then it could be a disaster at the time. Uh, and my the last one, so which is supportive in a, in a Toastmaster uh, structure, which is um, which is uh, uh, very supportive in, in a, with a, you communicate with a really empathy way that you want to get a message across and with the feeling to 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 communicate with others. So uh, without doing the test, I already know that I'm expressive, initiating. So I I I think most of you already agree, right? For for the one who have seen me uh, talking or, or doing the Toastmaster for the last year. So um, let me just do a share and continue talking. So um, to continue to 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 have this um, um, have this style, to I have uh, come to learn that one of the way that uh, I have expressed one of the personal experience I have expressed as using the express communication is uh, when in the reason in the most recent way uh, is uh, not really you one way or other is better than other I think personally so so even though I was uh, naturally expressive uh, initiating myself uh, full idea but when I was uh, doing uh, one uh, in a situation that in the just last month I'm moving to this uh, new place in the apartment communicating with our contractor the installer and in the same time with my wife, I realized that in different situations, you have to use different communication style, especially when you're in between your wife and the external installer. So uh, that's not, not like, uh, like, like I mentioned, there's not one way to, to do it or another, but having an express an idea is always good. But when you come back to the financial or more in the instrumental or, or more, um, Without oriented, using the way that you express talking to the contractor or your installer, using the direct or more driver uh, communication style, take in charge and express certain solution, express could be done. That's the way that uh, you have to deliver the message, of course, and then get the result done. And uh, when you come to the bills, when we negotiating the, 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 the bills and uh, pay the debt and pay the deal, uh, my analytical sense, uh, which I don't have much, but uh, of course I pass to my wife to help with the analytical communication style to the uh, external vendor who finally uh, pay the bill. So uh, amicable, uh, supportive to how to um, prioritize the relationship with uh, with uh, surrounding uh, with um, uh, making sure everything is in uh, around in a, in a, in a proper place. And using that communication com communication style into my uh, children uh, uh, is uh, is the way to handle it. Instead of doing uh, giving them a, a different ideas, will be a, another major disaster to me. So I'm very happy that uh, finally I uh, find myself into the progressing in this uh, level two project in, uh, on the way up to the uh, in the project path in the in the Toastmaster. But uh, what, like uh, one way or another, uh, finding myself as an expressive uh, communication style, but in the same time to manage and um, to digest to master the other three, in and use it properly in a way in a proper situation, uh, that will be my key focus in the coming year. That's my little objective, and uh, hope that we'll see the difference in the coming year. Thank you. Back to you. Thank you so much, Eric. If you will unshare your screen and we will continue forward with the meeting. And so at yep. this point, we're at the meeting where we're going to have guest introductions. We have quite a few guests this evening that I'm very happy that was able to join us. I will ask for each of you just 
to give a little bit about your name and maybe how you heard about the club. And then we'll probably stay on a little bit after the meeting to where if you have any questions or anything we can do to explain to you how the meeting works, we can do that at that time. So let's start with Timothy Higgins. Would you like to tell us how you heard about the club and what made you join us this, at this evening? Tim, are you there? If so, you'll need to take your, unmute yourself so that we can hear you. Okay, we'll keep moving so we don't, don't cut too much into our break. How about Susan Morgan? Susan, can you tell us how you heard about the club? And go ahead. Um, I don't know if you can hear me. I um, have been, okay, I was a member of the Crestview Toastmaster Club with you and Bruce, and um, you told me about this, and I'm very interested in finding out more. Well, thank you so much. We're very happy to hear from you this evening. And then we, we spoke a little bit earlier with Sally, but since everybody is here now, Sally, would you like to let everyone know how you heard about the meeting this evening? Yeah, hi. So, um, yeah, so previously I've joined different clubs, just um, joining as a guest. Um, so previously I've joined the HKUST Alumni Toastmaster, Toastmasters Club and also the TGIT, thank God, as Toastmasters Advanced Club, another like different club. So I'm um, just hopping around to see what different clubs can bring in different cultures um, and how different clubs work in the Toastmaster sessions. Thank you so much for that. Anjali, you're up. Tell us a little bit about yourself and how you heard about the club. Um, so hi, good evening to all of you. I guess I missed out on, uh, on, on, on even wishing everyone a good evening in my spur to just start off with my speech. So yes, um, so we are fairly new to Hong Kong. We've been here for about 10 months now, close to 10 months now. And um, so we were looking for, um, so, so when we started looking for, for, for Toastmasters, I found a lot of Cantonese speaking uh, Toastmasters clubs. And so I was on the lookout for someone, for, for a club that offered uh, um, Toastmasters for non-Cantonese and English speakers like us. And uh, so that's how uh, through a web search and scrolling through various uh, pages and websites and your Facebook page, uh, was what uh, led me to uh, yeah join your club and I'm glad to be here. We're so very happy to have you. Thank you. And then I'm probably going to get this pronunciation wrong, so please correct me, but is it Gwawal? Gwawal? Is that the correct pronunciation, Anjali? I see you both have the same last name, so how is I'm, am I pronouncing it correctly? <laughs> yeah, your husband and wife. <laughs> How did you hear about the club? Yeah, hi there. Uh, I, 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 thanks, thanks for having me, um, allowing me to speak and share my um, thoughts. Uh, You're welcome. I have, I have uh, been an avid fan of Toastmasters for quite some time. It, it's been a passion for me to speak. Um, however, I did have bouts of uh, nervousness uh, in the beginning, which I have managed to overcome in some, uh, in, in, in some sort of a way. However, uh, I'm a bit weak on speaking uh, on the spur of the moment. So sometimes I get a bit uh, entangled in, in, in my mind uh, and uh, the communication between the mind and the tongue, so to say. Uh, the quest for me to hear about this was through Anjali because we both are looking for getting associated with a club here after uh, shifting to Hong Kong uh, in the beginning of this year. Uh, COVID has really pushed us to the limit. So uh, at this point in time, it's been more of inside and indoor activities. Um, and we're looking out for uh, being able to actually be in presence in the Toastmasters session so we can really enjoy the part of it and also participate in a, in a bigger way. Um, actively so, uh, I have been involved with Toastmasters in Singapore. So, um, so looking forward for uh, getting that back online. Well, thank you so very much. I'm really happy that all the guests was here. Did I miss anyone? 
We're also very happy to see Mona and Sophia. We hadn't seen you all in a while, so very happy to have you back. We see Derek is here. So we have a full meeting and we're just happy that everyone was able to come out and join us this evening. One of the really key things, and we're gonna have a quick break here in a minute, is that this club, from my understanding, actually goes to a physical building, building to meet. However, because of COVID, we've been having to do Zoom. But what's gonna happen that's gonna be unique is at some point, they're gonna go back to the building but if you still want to join and you're across the seas or across the nation or in another country as we are, you can still join in by Zoom because they will still have the technology to be able to do that. And so right now, Steve, who is our timer, can you let me know how long we have for our network break? Yeah, on the agenda, it's just 12 minutes and we are a bit uh, late <laughs> on our schedule. So can we just cut it down to three minutes, I say? Is that enough for all of us? Absolutely, that's fine. And... So Let's keep it short three minutes it is. That'll give you a chance to get up and just kind of stretch a little bit. And we will be back here shortly for the evaluation part of our meeting. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Patty, and thank you, Steve. Thanks for having me tonight. I need to run for the time being. So uh, please enjoy for the rest of the evening as well. Thank you so much, Sean, for joining us. We appreciate it. See you around. Okay, everyone, it looks like that the break time is over. So I'm going to ask for everyone to return if possible, so that we can move on with the second half of our meeting. And the second half of our meeting begins with our table topics evaluations with Sophia. Sophia, are you there? Are you ready? Yes. yes. Thanks, Patty. You're very welcome. Okay. Hi, everyone. 
So I'm going to evaluate the table topic master and table topic speaker. So make sure that you are here to listen to my evaluations. First of all, I would like to evaluate Steve, our table topic master. First of all, Steve, I really like how you conduct the table topic sessions by list, listing out the pictures. First of all, with the clock and everyone have a chance to pick one number and pick our questions. That is very creative and it gives us the room to think and to um, to tell the story. So that is a good approach of delivering the table topic section. So I like that. And also, I really appreciate your thoughtfulness, especially in the section that uh, and Jolly, she is a new guest, right? So you took a chance to repeat and restate the rules of the table topics. So I really appreciate the gesture you make for her. So good. Good job. For the every new improvement is sometimes I say table topic master or a table at Toastmaster evening. One thing we really afraid of and we try not to make it in the meeting is that air. We don't want that air. Pausing is good, but that air is not good. So I would suggest next time when you are going to invite some guests, maybe you can message them in advance and make sure they're available, they're okay to talk, to share the table topic questions. So all in all, I really like how you conduct the table topic session and good language and good topic and questions. Something you need to prepare in a bus is, next time maybe send a message to the potential speaker and see if they are available to talk. So all in all, well done for your table topic sessions. And next, I was going to evaluate four table topic speaker except me because I have some record that I can listen to my sharing later on. First of all is Sean. I'm not sure Sean is here, but that's okay because Sean has done a good example of table topic sharing. When we talk about bar table topic, we always think, we always mention in table topic that three elements in the con organizations, opening, body, and closing. And what I found the most important thing is the first line in opening because it is the time to um, attract the attention from the audience, right? And I would like to point out that Sean's first sentence in his speech is very good. Do you still remember? The first sentence is, are you staying at home or are you going out pretending you're staying at home? So I think that sentence is a quite tricky. So, and I can sense this, I can feel that the sense of humor. So I really like this kind of opening. So immediately I can relate it and I can, and he can draw my attention. I will listen to the rest of his speech. So very good point, the sense of humor and the twist in the very beginning. The area improvement for song speech is, I would expect something special instead of stepping out of your comfort zone and stuff. I would expect him to relate it, his message more with the picture, like two ladies, right, from the back walking on a road. So I would expect it having something special meaning, special call for actions for the audience. But all in all, I really like songs, organizations of his speech. The second one is Jad, our guest, right? First of all, I really like your content, which is about friendship. So it is very good subject that we can mention in our table topic sessions. And I like how you carry Peggy's story in your speech. And a friend is someone who stands for our best interests. So I totally agree with your statement and your story. Something you may consider do, do it better next time is, can you mention and elaborate what is the unforgettable, unforgettable moment that you have with Patty? So, so tell me something more about it, something deeper, so we can you know, enjoy your inspiring story more. So all in all, I think you are a guest 
and maybe you are first try of table topic session i really appreciate you sharing your story with patty next i will have sally which is our guest as well and uh, sally i like how you sharing your sport and how you learn new sport and something that i could recommend is maybe next time you can elaborate more with your own story because when you talk about uh, snowboarding and then you talk about you will try a new sport after COVID. So do you have any unforgettable moment that you, or have you learned anything new from trying the sport? So I want you to say something more about the sport that you were trying because you have spent one minute and 47 seconds. So you have, more than 30 seconds left so you can elaborate more whether 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 you are trying the sport with your friend or your family tell us more about it and make your speech more juicy the final one is angela angela yes angela angeli right angeli okay first of all i really appreciate in your speech you have very clear organization three part the first part is about your childhood. The second part is the definitions of uh, the starry night. And the third part is mentioning the call for actions. So it is very clear. So I have two suggestions for you is that if I were you, I would reorganize your speech because your, your three point, the first point is more specific. It is related to your childhood. The second point is the definitions of the picture to everyone. So it is more general. The last point is the call for actions. So if I were you, I would switch the second point and the third point. Do you remember when I say we have opening body and closing, right? The opening is kind of more general stuff, but the body is the meat, it's, it is your story. So I would suggest next time you can switch it more general, specific, and call for action. That will make a more uh, constructive mm -hmm. speech. Mm -hmm. And the second part is, uh, next time maybe you can hold your, or maybe your phone or your camera with your eyesight level. Because when you're doing your table topic, you are looking down. So it is, it is kind of hard to look at your face. So next time maybe you can move it and adjust your camera level. So I know the time is up, so I pass the dates to Patty. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sophia, for your informative evaluations of our table topics. And just so everyone knows, Jared is our newest member. This is his first official meeting as a Toastmaster. And I know you didn't know that, Sophia, so I just wanted to go ahead and throw that out for everyone to know. Now we're going to allow our evaluators to evaluate the two speeches. And our first evaluator of this evening is Mona, who will be evaluating Carmen. Mona, you have it. Thank you, Patty. Hi. Good evening, everyone. Uh, Carmen, I was quite impressed with your performance just now, since you were talking about persuasive speaking tonight. So my uh, evaluation here will be sharing the same initials. The first P represents presentation. I think you did very well regarding the presentation. You shared with us a very unusual musical instrument that it can relate to Chinese people immediately, Erhu, than for experts or for our foreign Toastmasters or friends like a Patty and a Kelly, they can see the picture immediately. They may be intrigued. By that picture because they seldom see that kind of a traditional instrument. So I think regarding the presentation, it's a very well prepared, it's quite smooth, it's a very well delivered. The next part is you chose a very good story, which is very to the point and supports your view why schools or parents should support, make it a compulsory and mandatory to learn a musical instrument. On the second hand, a few things for improvement. The first part, you may want to look out for plots. The sec that's the second P. Uh, 
I understand that you use your friend's son's story to support your view. How learning a musical instrument helped him to improve his academic performance and helped him to qualify for a school acceptance. However, at the same time, we will be very curious. What exactly? How did this happen? <laughs> We want to have more plots regarding what intrigued or what made that your friend's son, that boy, to make the first step to choose Erhu or to choose a musical instrument lesson in the first place. Then with that learning experience, how it helped with his academic performance and how it made him to be a more patient, and somebody who perseveres in doing things, we would like to have more links in between those things so that we can see the ups and downs. Previously, he's an average student doing just so-so at school. However, learning a new hobby and a new instrument, it changed his life and it changed his whole academic performance. We want a little bit more details. The last part, I think you can invite our audience to think over, interact more with the audience. As Kelly is a mother of two children, <laughs> and uh, Patsy, and uh, for like a uh, single gentleman like Steve and myself, we are the parents to be. It will be very helpful to remind people, do not be so pragmatic. We should encourage the children to adopt something they really enjoy. Overall, I enjoyed your speech. That's all. Back to you, Patty. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mona. Very well done. And now we have Kelly, who will be evaluating Eric. Kelly, you're up. Uh, thank you very much, Patty. Okay, I was going to do an improvement sandwich, but then I was just looking at it and I changed my mind. I'm going to take uh, the words from Sophia, which was opening, body, and closing. And I'm going to look at your speech in each of those sections. And they have different headings as well. I don't have a very clever um, acronym, sorry. Uh, next time. So your opening is actually your area of improvement. I'm going to start with the area of improvement. How mean, but you're a seasoned Toastmaster now. <laughs> um, Eric, you are the Zoom counter this evening, and you started your speech. The very first word was, um, now the Zoom counter is the combination of the ah counter and the Zoom master. The other thing that you did that you would count against yourself as the Zoom master is you kept your screen, yeah, you shared your screen for the whole, uh, the whole speech and you just had one slide. Um, now, you, we couldn't really see you. I had to scroll around to find you. Um, and I don't really wanna see a, one slide that I've seen already. I wanna see you talking. So uh, remember your Zoom counter -ness next time. Um, the second area of improvement is the self-deprecating. Now I noticed that a couple of times. Um, you, you mentioned, I've done some research, but it was last minute. And I, I, I can be analytical, but I mean, what analytical skills I have? You know, I think, um, just generally speaking, not just for Toastmasters, but it's better not to put yourself down. Um, you've, I'm sure you have great analytical skills. So you can say that, say, and when I use my analytical skills, I apply this communication style. I wouldn't put yourself down. I don't think there's any reason to do that. And a lot of people, myself included, I used to do that, so I'm very aware. Anyway, I think uh, you're great, so just remember that. Oh my goodness. And then you did mention it, preparation. I think your speech would have just gone a lot smoother if you prepared it and um, perhaps videoed it and practiced it a little bit. Okay, now to the body. Your slide, your one slide was very, very good. Um, I immediately thought of our last Toastmasters meeting that was all about slides and all about PowerPoint. And you did not, it was not death by PowerPoint. It grabbed us, it was very colorful, it had pictures, uh, so it was very relatable. Well done on the slide, clearly that information went in. I loved how you used a personal example and a little bit of your, your sense of humor crept in uh, between your, yourself as a rock, uh, no, between a rock and a hard place. 
uh, being between the wife and the contractor and using um, rightly, as you say, different types of communication styles. So that was a really good example of actually using what you had learned in this uh, while preparing this speech. And then finally, to the closing, you gave a great wrapper. You gave a great summary. You said, this is what I am, but I have this new respect for all these other styles. And the takeaway wasn't so much for the audience, it was for yourself. You said, my objective is gonna be to use these other skills that I just learned in the next year. So in summary, let's work on our Zoom countering, <laughs> uh, less of the self-deprecating. Um, a lot of people use it as humor. It can be funny, but just not too much of it. Um, prepare, prepare, prepare. And then keep it up with great slides, uh, personal examples, and a wonderful summary, and you've got yourself a great speech. I can't wait, I, I'm not sure if this takes you to level three, but um, well done on your progress through Pathways. Thank you very much, over to you, Patty. Thank you so much, Kelly. So for everyone who's following the agenda, right now it says that we're gonna collect ballots and feedback forms, and so just a, a quick hint on that. Even if you are a guest, you are able to vote on the best table topics, which Steve, before the end of the meeting, will put a poll in the chat box. You can just basically click on the link and vote for who you felt like was the best at table topics. Also, for the feedback forms, if you had something that really stood out when someone spoke during table topics or during their speech, you can send them a private message. It could be areas of improvement or something that you just really enjoyed about the meeting. And now we will start with our reports and our first report will come from our timer, Steve. Now I did notice that Steve did put a lot of the times in the chat box. So I will let him handle this portion of the meeting however he chooses. Steve, you're up. Not sure where Steve went. Oh, there he is. Are you ready to give your timers report, Steve? Yes, I am. Sorry, I forgot to have my oh. mic uh, off and I have to uh, restart my screen. Anyway, so, ah, as the timer, oh, okay, <laughs> sorry. I just finished putting in the time for the evaluation, so here they are. In our table topics, if you actually watch the screen, everyone is actually within time. I'm sorry, the time is actually not that accurate because I have forgotten to start some of the table topic time. I remember for Sean, but I think I uh, forgot for Sally or Angelie, so they are a little bit sort of, uh, I guess, what, what was the word? It's a little bit predicted. <laughs> predicted the time a little bit. So apology on that. But every time, everyone seemed to be within time, so that's great. For prepare speeches, we have two today and both of which, Carmen and Eric, are also within their time frame of seven minutes and a half. Well done. Evaluation, now we have got some juicy evaluation, so unfortunately, that also came at a penalty. <laughs> Sophia took seven minutes and 51 seconds, so yes, slightly over time, a lot over time. <laughs> and Kelly went over by 30 seconds in order to help Eric, our future member, well, our current member, to improve for the future. So just to remind you, area uh, club contests are going to help soon, uh, going to be helped soon. So if you are going to be gunning for table topics and evaluation, make sure you're practicing your time control uh, concisely. Back to you, Patty. Thank you very much, Steve. We will now have Eric who will be our Zoom counter. We will get his report from him. Thank you, Patty. I think Kelly already has the Zoom counter report for me. I think I am the one who should be uh, counting for myself with all the R and arms and who's. And with the, uh, I think I just do the negative example. What do you call that? Um, whatever I did today is not what is supposed to be done as a Zoom, Zoom counter. I did exactly the opposite. Now I'm doing the, you know, the double negative, right? So yeah, I, I think I have over 15 or 16 arm um, counter, but most of us, are, um, when I when I recorded, uh, have done a great job. Carmen had a few uh, arm and pause, but then that's natural. But uh, as a speaker with the improvement, with the, uh, I don't go into detail with the already comment by Sophia. And uh, some of the guest speaker, I think uh, Angie uh, 
and Angelie did great uh, with a little bit pause and uh, I think that was Guru, the guest, but but their guest. So so it was uh, and it was table topic and introduction. Some of them are and all and pause. Uh, I I don't want to list out the all the names, just a few, but it was um, acceptable. And all other season member have done a great job. Uh, I did not catch any of the too many pauses and uh, and um and that I, except for myself. So I did a recording and I'm gonna count it for myself tonight. Thank you. Thank you so much, Eric. We appreciate that. And again, don't be so hard on yourself. It all comes with learning and trust me, you will get there because we're gonna support you all the way. We will now have our language evaluation report from Karen Lee. Hi, everyone, me again. Um, first, I'd like to uh, congratulate those who have used our word of the night, persevere. Sean used it once, and he, I think Sean also used a perseverance towards the end of his speech. And then Jared, our newer member, he used both terms, persevere and perseverance, once. And Patty, I think Patty used the word a few times during her introduction. And Steve, I think he's, he used it once. And for the use of language for tonight. Um, there are two spots that I spot um, that um, may um, contain some room for improvement. Um, it I think it should be in abundance instead of to be abundant, enthusiastic about instead of enthusiastic in. And besides these two spots, I think everyone spoke clearly and with a lot of very interesting and meaningful expressions. So I just name a few to stop self-deprecating. I think it's a very good reminder uh, to be humble, but not look down ourselves excessively. And um, under COVID-19, we are all a bit entangled, but if we persevere through all these difficulties, we can be physically, mentally, and spiritually strong. That's a good reminder. And there are, it's, there's also a very interesting comparison between a rock in a hard place and a wife and an external contractor. <laughs> very funny comparison. And it's never too late to pick up a new spot, to try something new, to have a dream and to pursue that dream. And most, most importantly, if we persevere, any dreams unfulfilled will be fulfilled one day. So we all spoke beautifully and with great aspirations. Back to you, Patty. Thank you so much, Karen. Very well done. We're at our general evaluations. And again, if you're following the agenda on this portion, it says it's a floor evaluations. From time to time, we have guests come in and they give us an evaluation, but it's just all of us family here together. And so you, we all get to tell what we thought about the meeting. It could be bad, good, and different. And I'm actually going to pick on Kelly because she is always really good at evaluation to just kind of start us off with what you thought about the meeting today. Um, thanks very much, Patty. Hi. Actually, I haven't really got a lot to add. Um, I think it was a, a really well run meeting. Um, the one thing we need just before the meeting, we need to put the link in the um, uh, on meetup and on the chat outside of zoom but um other than that <laughs> the music was great just the right <laughs> level <laughs> um everybody's connectivity was pretty good there there wasn't anybody um sophia you cut out for just a second during yours and then when you came back you were on mute but once i highlighted that to you you took it off immediately um and so yeah i think um it's great having so many visitors to our club and even some of them being brave enough to do table topic speeches. So all in all, I think it was a, a well-run meeting. Thank you so much, Kelly. Oh, I like the hand clap, Steve. And speaking <laughs> of Steve, our, our wonderful president, how did you think the meeting went today? It was a bit overwhelming for me because taking a timer role plus something else is always going to be exhausting. Always to remind myself that I have to do the timing as well too. But it's a lot of fun for me to see everyone participating tonight. We have our newest member, Jared, to actually join our meeting as an official member. And he has already cracked the ice on the table topic for our club. Well, on his participation in the club, 
which is uh, a much, uh, I guess, appreciative gesture as well too. Always, you know, step out of your comfort zone and it's never too late to start something anew. And also we have our guests from um, Florida, as well as we have guests from our local Hong Kong, um, uh, two visitors uh, from Hong Kong as well too. So it's nice to see guest participation. It's nice to see you stay for the whole meeting and to enjoy ourselves. You know, Toastmaster is sort of a way to uh, better ourselves, but at the same time, don't forget that we are here for fun. We are here to grow, but uh, in a more, I guess, casual, connected way. That could be the selling point for our club. Unlike some of the more competitive uh, offense club, right? We like to take things more on the easy side so that everyone can enjoy the process. They don't have to be uh, self-deprecating themselves because they don't feel like they're good enough, right? Because uh, we know that everyone learns at a different pace and we are all going to be comfortable at achieving what we want at whatever speed we desire. Um, in terms of the meeting, I think, yeah, I had a lot of fun. That's why I'm just going out of control now. <laughs> Thank you. Well, thank you, Back Steve. to you, Patty. We appreciate it. And I would like to hear from Karen. And what I am doing is actually calling on some of the officers of the meeting. Kelly is our immediate past president. Steve is our current president. And Karen is our vice president of education, which you'll get to learn more about these as you get acclimated into the club if you decide to join us, which we're hoping that you will. So, Karen, what did you think about the meeting? Thank you, Patty. I guess Patty has set the bar very high for Toastmaster of the evening. You have a very great background. It's never too late. So we remind everyone of our theme for the night. And then I love your PowerPoint and your pictures. And you actually like, if you let us know a bit more about you and the path that you went through. So it's all very encouraging and um, it's, it's all very like, welcoming. So we all relate, we can all relate to you, your experience. And we also want to learn something about the radio license or something. You should tell us all about it <laughs> later on. So I really love tonight's meeting and especially the theme is never too late because it reminds everyone um, we can always beat the odds and persevere. Thank you, Patty. Thank you so much, Karen. Now, it would be horrible of me to include members to talk and not ask anybody who wants to say anything. Jared, y'all don't know, he's a pretty big talker. So Jared, do you have anything you'd like to add? Thank you for the call out right there. <laughs> um, I would say that this meeting went a lot better, particularly because there were not as many technical difficulties as there were in the last meeting. Um, of course, there's room for improvement, but nothing that really sticks out specifically to me. Uh, thank you everyone for the warm welcome as a first time member of a Toastmasters club, yay me. <laughs> uh, but that's all I have to say. Thank you, Toastmaster of the evening, Miss Patty. Thank you so much, Jared. And he is getting all these roles down and he just joined. So I applaud him for knowing who does what. We have some other guests. I call on you all earlier, so this time I'm not gonna call on anyone, but if you have something that you think would help us to improve our meetings or something that you just thoroughly enjoyed, just kind of raise your hand up and take your volume off, put your mute off and let us know what you thought about the meeting. Guest, anyone. I'll take one. I would, hello, Patty, this is Eric. Yeah. So uh, first of all, I just want to thank you, Patty, again, and for everyone else. I think Patty, uh, of course, you know, all the officers are driving the club, and Patty's just take it to the whole level uh, of driving the club going forward, I feel. And um, definitely, um, with this help, and and uh, this is a part of the um, inference and part of the, um, uh, being together and uh, and uh, the new unusual, not not physically together, but be a, be able to connect together and the way she drive it and in the WhatsApp and we the reminder and for someone like me always uh, the last minute and then the, the self reassurance and then learn that. So uh, I think really appreciate that. I just want to say that and uh, helping with all the guests and new guests here. And um, this is really a dynamic club with uh, people halfway around the world and. Uh, we are joining this club is uh, helping, especially in this COVID situation. 
so we can uh, it's no more boundary and even when we're back in the uh out of the COVID, COVID time when we're back in the physical uh, we got a little boy coming around <laughs> always uh when we are uh, when we're back in the physical zone i mean we still can able to connect it remotely uh, uh with a little bit technical uh support so uh that's all i want to share thank you and uh, i i think i got to go go back and do my zoom uh contact report with my own down but i did catch uh, steve and kelly a little bit just now i just uh maybe i just start officially counting i caught three or four just in the last two minutes so uh maybe i have to do better zoom counter or our counter job this time. that's all well we'll help you with that even if we have to do a one-on-one -on -one, not a problem <laughs> thank you so i will say some short words I really enjoyed this meeting. I enjoyed Toastmasters overall. We did start just a few minutes late, but we were hoping to make sure to get our guests in. We're typically notified ahead of time when guests are coming and we didn't want to start without having all of our guests here. But by taking a shorter network break, we also was able to pretty much catch up on that time. And so I enjoyed doing this. Steve, I um, think is the one who perhaps came up with the theme. I'm not sure who actually came up with it. And as you can see, I really enjoyed it. And not only that, I, I don't know who was here at the beginning, but I even used some Chinese words like Kong Bu, Dei Chao, and, 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 you know, some hello everyone and some good evening, madam and sir, which was pretty exciting because I didn't know any Chinese words at all. And I actually reached out to a Chinese friend to say, hey, I want to do something different. And since we're talking about it never being too late, it's never too late to learn a new language. And so thank y'all basically for putting up with me. It's been a joy. Enjoyed the speeches, the table topics, everything. I won't delay. At this point, Steve, do you have the ballot counts in the chat room? Yes and no. Apparently soon there's some upgrade and I cannot add in extra options. So I have to break it into two parts. So the five speakers, there will be three for the first. So I'll launch it and you'll see. Uh, okay. I want you to vote for the best table topic speaker. Oh, that's actually two questions. Oh, I can do that. I didn't know. Do you see both questions up here right in front of you? Oh. But the yes. thing is, I want one yes, question with the five selection. So can you just uh, select the best from all five? Don't select like one from the first group and then one from the second group. <laughs> they need to be mutually exclusive. It's one or well, the other. Um, <laughs> here's, the pro here's the problem. Since it's divided into two questions, you have to answer both in order to submit the ballot. That is really? Excellent. Yes. Because I tried to wow. do it with just one and it wouldn't allow me to do that. Oh my goodness. Okay. Well, I messed up. I should have said, I should, ah. Just have a double winner. Okay. No, 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 I get it. I get it. We can go back to the next session. What was the next session? I can fix it up by giving you a dummy. Okay, okay so if you no, want to work on that, then I will go ahead and call on Karen because I think she had some presentations or something that she was going to do. So will that work for you? Yeah. Uh, so to, to encourage our members yes. to complete their levels as soon as possible or to just to congratulate our members for making an achievement. From now on, uh, I will present the sort of like the badge that you'll be given after you complete a level. And um, with a Patty's advice. I now know that um, I, it's, it's my, um, my honor to do it. And our inaugural member who would be uh, represent with that badge would be our honorable president, Steve Zhang, who has recently completed his um, level three. I think he has completed his level four, but he hasn't uh, submitted the, the, the form or something. So I'd like to present this very special badge um, to Steve, so that's the, so it's red. <laughs> so with the word number three, um, that, um, that denotes his achievement and red means uh, very lively and uh, full of hopes. So, um, so congratulate, um, so let's congratulate Steve for achieving level three. And, um, and uh, I think that's what I, I would like to do tonight. And um, so, for other members, if you have complete any level or, or, had, or have got any achievements like winning an award outside, do let me know. And I'll try to do like a virtual presentation on Zoom or, or we can have a physical ceremony when we can all return to our usual place for meeting. So back to um, Patty, thank you. Thank you very much, Karen. All right, Steve, how are we coming with those votes? 
I caught it. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> you know Please what to do. <laughs> if you don't Please think everyone. that's the speaker, Please select new. <laughs> I mean, hey, that works. So. <laughs> I can't add any more choices. Like there isn't an option for me to add beyond two choices. So I have to use the old poll and I only have four options before. I don't know what they're doing with the system. I think it's like oversight or something. Is this part of the Zoom function or you have to yes. add in as a module? No, no, uh, Zoom has it integrated. Is your pay account or, or everyone yeah. has it? Okay. Uh, it has to be a, at least basic level account, so it has to be a paid. Okay. Oh, by the way, Patty also completed uh, her level one pathway. I did. <laughs> <laughs> so I will now turn the meeting back over to our president, Steve, who will give us who won the best table topic session and close out with any remarks that he has. Thank you everyone for voting. So let's start off with the results. Tonight, because we only had two prepared speeches, we won't have a vote on the best speaker. And for evaluation, we only have two plus the table topic. So of course, uh, so in addition, I will also just leave it as this. But we had a vote, we have the results in for tonight's best table topic speaker. And the award goes to, drum roll. Best table speaker for tonight, actually it's a split. It's between Sophia and our guest Sally. Congratulations Sophia and Sally. So as closing remark, and unfortunately I can't give this to you, you know, just send it to you digitally. So this is something that you can feast on. <laughs> and if you do join us as members, you will have more chances to actually take this. Um, it through the screen. <laughs> with you. <laughs> uh, before, my, uh, before I end the meeting, there are just some things that I want to uh, share with everyone. First of all, we hold meetings every second and fourth Wednesday at the same time tonight. So we will also have hours here on the 14th of October. I will also put up the flyers on our meetup group as well as our Facebook book, uh, face group book, <laughs> Facebook group. Yeah, so keep I will not count that one. Hmm? <laughs> I will not count that one. Oh, okay, thank you. So make sure you keep, keep your eyes open for those uh, flyers, yeah. And I was going to say something else as well too, but now I, that, now I have forgotten. Photo? If I, hmm? Photo? Picture? Photo? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Photo comes after I adjourn the, the meeting. So yeah, please stay still. <laughs> after I call the uh, meeting to adjourn, I still want to uh, take a group photo of us so that we can have something to share with uh, some of you, if you will actually want to get in touch with us, we can uh, yeah, send you that photo over as, as well as a video because we're recording. So if you want the um, private link, I can send that to you so they can see how you did in your table topics, if you have done any or in your guest introduction for that matter. So that's all I can think of. So with that said, I would like to um, call the meeting to be successful and I will now adjourn our 246 uh, meeting at Hong Kong MBA Toastmasters. Uh, stay still, stay still. We're going to have a picture. So give your best pose, silly pose, whatever. <laughs> I'll take one more. <laughs> yes, yes, Jared, best, best pose ever. Okay, got it. So if you guys want to just stay a little bit and talk about how the club goes or you know what to do to sign up, I think um, yeah, you can speak to any one of us because our VPM is actually not in the meeting tonight. Kelly and I can help you. I think Patty also understand um, the enrollment process. If any one of you are interested. Cool, good meeting everybody.
Great meeting. I enjoyed it. I even had my, my pseudo wine tonight. We typically have wine and it's too early in the morning for wine, but it looks good. <laughs> <laughs> I think it looks great. I finished my wine. 